Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of Max Tech Motorsports. Um, it's kind of raining outside right now so we're not going to uh, be out there at the moment. I'm just trying to look outside the window there and it might be letting up a bit. But anyways, um, yeah while we're inside here we're moving on to our next uh, thing for the time attack build. So I left you guys with the oil cooler and uh, the fan, the fan um, for the oil cooler like finishing that up um, and so far so good. You know what I mean the fan works very well. And our um, our lines are kind of holding everything together. We will see what happens when we actually start it. But anyway, so um, yeah, the next thing we're gonna be doing here is installing a boost gauge and an oil pressure gauge. Now, um, these two things are pretty important when you're trying to monitor um, not just your daily driver, but in general, especially on a, on a racetrack, right? Um, you want to know if you got any boost leaks, and I mean, when you lose all your oil pressure, then you know there's a there's a big issue. Um, you know, there's a lot of different gauges you can get. You can get a uh, AFR gauge, you can get your uh, exhaust temperature gauge, you can get uh, oil temperature gauge, and, um, you know, I mean, every gauge serves a great purpose, but um, for the budget, I think uh, these two are, are perfect, and, and um, you know, I mean, if, as long as I can monitor uh, these two guys, that's all I care about at the moment. But anyways, let's take a look at the gauges. So um, these are from New South Performance. I picked it up from Das Parts. They're in Cambridge, Ontario. And uh, yeah, so there's the part number for one. Um, as we got a guy running around here. What are you doing? Hey? And uh, yeah, so we got this one here and then we got our, um, this is our oil pressure gauge. Now, um, what I found with New South was some pretty good reviews. Um, the thing I like about them the most is um, they seem to be pretty friendly as far as to the MK4, um, you know, I mean, in this case, the Golf GTI. Um, to that platform. Um, I also do like it that they kind of keep the same sort of um, lighting and, and kind of colors so you can kind of see the blue with the red needle which is very OEM to the style of um, of our stock uh, gauges on our car. So um, you know you can go out and buy a cheaper gauge if you want from eBay or Amazon whatever and that's totally up to you or you can spend I mean, hundreds and hundreds of dollars on a nice gritty gauge, but um, in the end, when you're doing this stuff, you just want to find something that's that has the quality and obviously fits your budget. So, um, yeah, so these are the two gauges, and then we have ourselves, this is our mounting pod here. So this is also from New South. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and open this up to actually take a look at it. So we can see already we have our, these look to be some, um, what's it called, like 3M strips. Um, I mean, just to, just to obviously mount uh, the, the column here, or to our column. But yeah, so we have those. We get a nice sticker from uh, New South, because who doesn't like uh, stickers on our, on our cars, of course. And then we have some instructions. So this is just, uh, you know what I mean? Kind of what a uh, uh, kind of a summary of what the whole uh, the thing is. So it's an MK4 dual column pod. So obviously we can fit two gauges in there. Um, and if you guys are interested in looking at it, so this one's it's designed to fit anything from 1995 and a half to 2005 MK4 Golf Jetta uh, GTI GLI. Um, yeah, and then it works with uh, two inch or two in one sixteenth um, AK 52 millimeter uh, diameter gauges. So. Um, yeah, and then inside of here, we pretty much got our basic instructions on uh, you know what to do. Suggested tools um, says here with some tape and stuff like that. So um, yeah, we have that obviously, and then we have our pod. So there's our pod right there. There we go. So first impressions so far on it. Um, uh, I don't know if it's fiberglass. It feels like plastic. Um, yeah, you know, I mean, it doesn't feel too cheap, but not too expensive, that's for sure. But very, very, very light, which is, um, I mean, obviously a big plus, um, easy to work with. And obviously it's going on a steering column, like, who are we kidding, right? Um, so pretty basic, you're going to um, slide your wheel back as far as possible. We're going to get that little uh, kind of cover off that's on the column right now. And then this will be right in front. So um, a lot of guys like to do the pillar gauges, which is all fine and dandy. I just... Uh, I don't know, I kind of want to be a little different, and um, yeah, this is pretty sweet, so 
Okay, so that's there now. Um, yeah, let's open up our gauges. So we're gonna start off with our our boost gauge. So the first thing I see when you open up is our um, this is our vacuum line, our boost gauge line. So what we're gonna be doing with this is we're gonna be running this um, through a rubber grommet in the firewall, which I will show you guys if this uh, rain kind of holds off here. And um, yeah, and then this will be running up to, we're gonna put this into a T-fitting that's gonna be at my um, fill, or fuel pressure gauge, or fuel, sorry, fuel pressure regulator. So um, if you guys follow the build from doing the catch can on stuff, we have our brand new vibrant silicone hose in there. So um, yeah, pretty basic stuff again. And then going uh, further here, uh, you get a secondary box, and inside the box will, I would assume, be the gauge. So, uh, we have our T-fitting. So this is the T-fitting right here for your vacuum. Um, just be careful with it because it is a brittle uh, plastic, you know what I mean? As new as it is, and um, when we do the install, I'll show you exactly where that's going to go. Um, we also have, this looks to be a couple more. Um, kind of vacuum line here. I have to figure that out. As my cat's playing with this wrapper here. And then moving forward, um, so here we got, uh, these look to be some sort of uh, electrical connections, I'm assuming. There's also some nuts and uh, a couple washers in there, which might be for the mounting. And then we have some trusty zip ties. We have our uh, mounting bracket. So this is what's gonna be holding the gauge inside the actual um, uh, the column, our, our gauge pod there. And then going on further, we have ourselves our gauge. So nice bubble wrapped. Take this out nice and easy. So there it is there. So pretty good quality. Um, I'm digging this. Uh, so it looks like black paint, but it's actually got like kind of like a rubber kind of feel to it. So I kind of dig that for sure. And then there's our, uh, what's it called? You can see the, uh, the needle with with everything there. Um, you know, I mean, you can get electronic gauges too, but like these analog ones are so old school looking. They remind me of like the Group B area, Group C era, all that um, type of stuff. So I'm kind of digging that for sure. And then if you look at the back, so this little guy right here, this is exactly where our vacuum hose is going to be. So I'll be running our vacuum hose from here through the firewall to our fuel pressure regulator hose with that T-fitting. And then we have our wiring. So the wiring is back here. Um, looks to be uh, pretty basic. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to read the instructions obviously on where to uh, wire everything, but... Uh, just two wires, a red and a black, which I assume will be power and ground. Okay, so that's in there. Uh, moving on, again, we have our instruction manual for New South. So you can see that. Uh, I'm just going to get it out. I'm not going to obviously read it to you, but um, yeah, pretty basic. So what I'm going to do now is just kind of put everything away. That way everything is nice and, nice and tucked here. And then we'll be moving on to our oil pressure gauge. Okay, moving on to the oil pressure gauge here. Here it is. So we're just gonna unbox this one too. Again, the, all these parts are from Das Parts. They're in Cambridge, Ontario. If you're a local guy um, in the area, um, yeah, they were able to get it pretty fast. So, um, okay, so looking at this, what uh, I can see from least from off the bat here is uh, we got our zip ties. Um, yeah, again, we have some sort of electrical connection stuff here. Um, yeah, you can see a couple blades that we're going to be doing some crimping. And then you can also see our, um, that is a reducer of some sort, this pipe fitting. So, um, it's got an O-ring on it, but from what I remember, um, this is going to be going into the sandwich plate obviously, which is, I believe is a one eight. MPT, which will require some sort of um, pipe dope or thread sealant. So um, I might just put a little dab on there. Um, but yeah, and then we also got our, this looks to be, this is our sensor. So this is the actual oil pressure sensor. Um, again, uh, I'll probably put a little bit of pipe dope on there just cause that's probably a, uh, an MPT thread. And then it comes with a nice connector. 
on it. So this is all going to be sitting on that sandwich plate that I uh, installed from Mishimoto. And then we have our wiring harness. So um, yeah, this is obviously going to plug into there. And then uh, we have three lines running out of it. Um, looks to be a power, a ground, and uh, I'm assuming either a switch ignition of some sort, but we'll have to read that. So here, same sort of setup. Um, yeah, great shape. Uh, you can see at the back here, everything's electrical. So unlike the boost gauge, um, if this was a mechanical gauge, it would, um, you know, I mean, it would have some sort of fitting that oil would actually come up through the firewall to the gauge and use the pressure off of that. But um, yeah, with the sensor, it's nice. And then we still have the analog style to keep it kind of old school. Um, and again, we have some more wiring harness. So um, yeah, here it looks like you're going to have your, your power, your ground, and then the white, I believe, will be part of the other harness. And then um, I'm assuming maybe the yellow will be the switch ignition or some sort of lighting thing. So, um, yeah, we got that out now. And then we have our, obviously, our two nuts with our, our trusty bracket for the pod. And then our instructions. So, uh, yeah, overall so far, I forgot what I paid in total for, total for everything. Um, I think the gauge pod itself was like 70 bucks or 50 bucks or something around that range, uh, Canadian. Um, and then, um, the, the boost gauge was like a hundred bucks Canadian with the oil pressure gauge, I believe being 130. Um, so honestly, like pretty decent budget stuff. Okay guys, so we're out here now. Um, yeah, the rain's kind of gone away, which is great. And, um, yeah, just reading in some of the instructions on what we're going to do. But anyway, so, um. Yeah, first things first, I'm going to try to get this boost gauge done. So right there, if you guys take a look, you can see the black hole. Um, so pretty much there, there's a little rubber grommet, which goes into the car. So that's where our boost line for the boost gauge is going to be running through. And um, yeah, I think that's going to be the first thing I'm going to run is that. So I'm just going to go take a look or uh, kind of poke around with it and see where it actually is inside the car to make sure I can get at it. And then... Um, I might put a little uh, pinhole in it that way I can at least stretch it out to put the the line in because I want to use that rubber grommet to protect the line from getting all cut up on the metal and whatnot so okay so if you guys look way way you can see the light coming in there it is it's awesome so there's where we're gonna be running our boost line and I like that because it's gonna be separated from pretty much any sort of wiring so I'm just gonna run this stuff through, this stuff right here, and then, yeah, I'm gonna kind of leave a bunch of it underneath the steering column that way. When I run it up to the actual column, it'll be ready to go. So, um, also what you guys wanna do is, you can see, push the column back. So here's your tilt steering and all that stuff. You're gonna wanna just push your column or pull your column back as far as possible and lower it, because we're gonna have to remove some of the trim up here and then, um, it says to wire it to um, the dimmer switch, which I think a lot of people do do, and very basic. Once you guys have this whole panel thing off the side, you can just kind of see. You can push. Um, I mean, you can push that all, push that out. So um, yeah, okay. Let me run this um, this boost line right now, and uh, I'll bring you guys back in when I'm done. Okay guys, so once you get your steering column down and pulled out as far as you can, uh, we're going to move this piece here, which is pretty, uh, pretty basic. You're just going to just kind of pull on it. And that will expose everything underneath there. So um, that just makes it easier for us to run our wires to our actual column, column um, pod here. Um, so now what I'm going to have to do is I need to remove this clip, I believe. Um, to get this thing off and then at that point I have to trim I think a little bit of this that way I can run the wires underneath um, I mean that way it looks nice and, and subtle so and everything's nice and hidden so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now I'm just gonna have to remove this clip here and um, yeah, we'll see how it goes so once you get this piece off you can see so on this little uh, ring here um, you're gonna have to cut about an inch I think that's what they're saying. Um, it makes sense because when this ring's gonna be sitting on the ground, then um, the leather's not gonna be attached to it. So you'll be able to run um, your wires and everything 
um, just just through this little gap here, which will the leather will kind of maybe push up a little bit, but very very unnoticeable. So um, yeah, now that that's kind of done, I'm just gonna kind of place everything there just to make sure and kind of see how that would look. So imagine that it was like all the way stuck down. So um, with this little trim, um, you're not gonna be able to obviously um, push the leather up, but with this you will be. So when it's nice and tight there, you'll be able to do that. And then when it folds back over, they'll come out there perfectly right onto the gauge pod. So um, yeah, I'm happy that's done right now. Now we're gonna move on to running this uh, this line. So you guys can see, if I just tighten this bad boy up here, um, just because it's so easy to take it back off, but... Okay, so... Got hard with one hand. Anyways. So there you go. So if that's like that, and then... Again, with the one hand here. I can just sneak it... Right underneath spot there you go so it'll stay nice and hidden underneath there and then by the time um you know, I mean this is where the gauge is going to be or the the pod's going to be so like you're not even going to see this little gap so that's why we removed that little uh, retaining clip there so pull this back out just so you can see everything that's going on and uh yeah so let's route this bad boy um, yeah, through the little rubber grommet. I'm gonna put a little tiny pinhole in the rubber grommet so I can fit this hose through, and then um, that should seal everything up. So again, we're just feeding this in, thing through here. Um, having this panel will help so I can get my hand way back there. You can see it right there. Um, just make sure, guys, again, that you have your battery unplugged. That way um, you don't shock yourself on anything, but... Um, yeah, runs in through there, and then out. To, through the little hole right there and then we have all this to play with which is giving me more than enough since we're going to the fuel pressure regulator right here with the new um, the new vacuum line on it so um, yeah what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, this part with the T and then I will trim everything back as I go that way I don't have too much access but at the same time I want to be able to maneuver everything so that it's away from like a lot of heat and all that stuff too right so um, the first thing I gotta do here is grab the grommet and I'm just gonna put notch a little hole in there with um, um, you can use the exacto knife or anything I'm just gonna see if I can use them with some side cutters here and then I'm just gonna kind of send this thing sorry just send this thing along the actual line all the way and that way it's um yeah it stays there and it seals up that hole all right so i got this little guy right here um it's just a small little torx bit but honestly like should do the job yeah there we go so right through um start off small make it bigger as you go um that way it uh seals it as tight as possible i don't want no fumes or anything getting in there see how this works okay there we go so it looks a little bit like uh, that rhino scene from Ace Ventura which is pretty funny but that's okay so again nice and tight tight um, I did do a little tiny crimp pushing in there so I'm just gonna chop that piece off when I get a chance um, if not it's actually really not that bad it might be okay but um, okay let's run this baby through Okay, so we're, um, yeah, we've got that all the way in there now. And then, uh, yeah, we're, so what we're going to do, I'm going to try to keep this thing, like I said, away from the motor as far as possible. Um, you can kind of see the passageway I have here from the oil cooling electrical. Um, we're also going to be using this electrical for the oil pressure gauge, but, um, okay, again, I'm just going to kind of route it, everything underneath. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab our T-fitting. Oh, i got a bit of a mess going on here. So there's our T-fitting. And then, um, so what's gonna happen now is, um, there's two pieces. So this is gonna go on like this. And then what you're gonna do is, you're going to use this vacuum hose to go, I'm gonna try to get the defense through here. There we go. So we're gonna take this T and then we're gonna do is wet this vacuum hose so that it goes on to here and then the actual 
line itself is going to go into this end and then vice versa on the actual gauge. Just take our pliers, a nice even cut. There we go. There it is right there. And then again, you're going to want to wet um, this nylon tubing just a bit and then it's going to go into um, this section right here. So. Um, and then that will be everything you need to do on this side of the motor. Okay guys, so we're back here. Um, yeah. So yesterday I ended up actually changing the boost line. Um, you know, I mean, I had some spare uh, vibrant, vibrant silicone um, vacuum hose here. So from what I read, it should work actually pretty good. Um, I mean, the nylon stuff was okay, but really I don't want to... Uh, I mean, I've, I've heard stuff about it getting very brittle with the heat and um, just the way I was pointed into that little rubber hose for the T-fitting, I just, uh, I, I was crimping it and stuff. I wasn't too too happy with it, if I'm honest. So, um, yeah, I could think I had some spare uh, vibrant hose here. So, um, you can see it's in, in the, what's it called, in the grommet there. And then I kind of just routed it. It was a little bit shorter, so it's right underneath the intake pipe here. Um, I have it lightly zip tied, uh, not to the point where it's going to squeeze any um, any of it, but enough so that uh, when the boost does go in and it expands, it should have enough room to move. Um, but at the same time, keeping it keeping it away from any harmful stuff. Uh, T fitting, we did a couple zip ties on it um, just to make sure. But and then it runs same place into the car, so. Uh, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the boost reading is with it. Um, I don't really have much to, to judge off of, but um, yeah. In the meantime, no, we're going to be getting our oil pressure gauge wiring figured out here. Just gonna open this up, and here's our harness that we're gonna run through the car um, from the engine bay into the firewall, and then um, yeah, a couple of connections here. Still debating on how I'm gonna do the actual connections, but. Um, yeah, so here is our sending unit, and then for the V-dubs, you're gonna put on this little 10 mil guy right here. Um, it's a brass fitting now, from what I understand. You actually do not have to put any sort of Teflon tape or any pipe dope on these things, because apparently they act as a ground. Okay, so we got, this is the adapter, the 10 mil adapter fitting. Um, so yeah, fits right in there. Uh, you can see it has the O-ring on it. Um, let me just wipe the screen here for a second, guys. There we go. That's a bit better. So yeah, so that's in there now. Um, hopefully I did it tight enough. It's nice and snug. And of course you can see the O-ring right there. I might give it one more snuggy there. Um, yeah, that way, I mean, we'll find out the hard way if it's tight enough or not, but pretty basic. Yeah, it should be okay. Um, yeah, once that's in there, again, guys, you're gonna wanna keep uh, these guys safe. So this is obviously the Allen bolt here. So let's, uh, yeah, well, pretty basic once you have this guy in there. Now on your um, your other um, application, whatever you're doing, if you're gonna install the same gauge, um, you know I mean, you might only need this part, but at least for the V-dubs and apparently the sandwich plate, you're gonna need it as well. So um, yeah, we're just gonna thread this on and then we'll tighten everything up. Nice, now be careful guys, because these are brass fittings, so if you do over tighten them, they will snap, and it's not fun trying to get everything back. <sighs> okay, guys. Well, I really don't want to talk about it, but remember when I told you about brass fittings? There's your, there's your proof right there. I reefed on a bit too hard, trying to close it into this. Um, I should know better. This is the second time I've done these with oil pressure sensors. One was on the Camaro, and that was a huge bitch to get that out. But um, this one not as bad. So I just covered up the hole for now. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I can order another sensor. I think they're like, maybe like 70 bucks, but whatever. Um, yeah, so we're gonna run the wiring harness still. At least I'll, I'll have it, everything ready to go for when the sensor is actually, um, you know, when I actually have the sensor here. So uh, we're gonna be using our wiring loom that we used um, for our fan wiring. Um, and pretty basic, um, what you're gonna see here, is, uh, I mean, you got your red, your black, and your white. And then if you look on the back of our oil pressure sensor, you can see that it has, same thing, the red, uh, the white, and the red, and are the red, black, and white. 
and then we have the yellow in there so pretty much what you're doing is the black is going to be going to the black on the actual uh, gauge itself and then from there you're going to have like a T or some sort of um, junction point and it's going to go to ground and then the red uh, right here is going to go to the red on the pressure gauge itself and then from there we're going to be putting it to um, switched ignition power um, the white and the white uh, just go together so you don't have to do any sort of splicing uh, any extra wires in there just pretty much one on top of the other and then uh, the yellow on this thing uh, on the actual gauge is going to go to our dimmer switch for for power too so um, yeah anyways I'm going to start running this what a huge bummer man honestly but shit happens so whatever okay guys so right now we're just kind of getting this uh, this pod mocked up so obviously the gauge isn't centered there but um so new self provides uh, a little rubber band which helps eliminate the use of this um, mounting bracket which is a I don't know a big deal here actually because it's so tight and I'm trying to get this thing in you kind of have to like weasel your way as the gauge moves moves in then you have to put it into the bracket then you have a little tiny nut that you have to use it's just a huge pain in the ass so um yeah I'm, as you're doing this so you can see how it's kind of like uneven so once you get the band on I'm just going to rotate around and just pull the band up as you go and so on and so forth uh, just be careful with your wire at the back um but yeah so we'll see how it goes i'm just going to get the the boost gauge done here and then the oil pressure gauge uh put on and then um at least we can mock up the bracket today and at least make sure that the the boost gauge works um you know what I mean? And then uh, and then we'll do a double check on the oil pressure one when the new sending unit comes in. So um, at that point after, then we'll, we'll tape up the sides. But yeah, let me just worry about getting this. So far, honestly, these gauges are so nice. And I was actually uh, with a buddy last night who had the same gauges, and they look so good at night. So I'm pretty, pretty stoked about that. But uh, yeah, let me just get this stuff on, and then I'll bring you guys back in. Yeah, so there's the one. You see how I have nice and flush there? There you go. And honestly, like takes a bit of resistance or a bit of pressure to rotate it but um you know i mean it's at the point that where we're driving around it shouldn't move and honestly to pull it back out like just barely so it should uh yeah even with the shaking like we have no problem nice and flush it looks absolutely unreal so yeah i'm pretty actually i mean that thing's pretty awesome that's actually a really good idea but um yeah i figured to show you guys guys so there's both of them right there yeah they look really good actually um okay so when you're gonna do your wires here just like with any other gauge it doesn't have to be obviously with the mark four um but like you're gonna have to obviously unravel your wires now you're gonna want to obviously make sure that you keep each uh respective wire with it respect with its respective gauge so um yeah i'm gonna try to keep it as clean as possible in here um i'm probably gonna do some electrical tape stuff as i go um that way i can i know how to separate the oil pressure gauge from the boost gauge and then um, what I did just, you know, I mean, I put the boost gauge on um, the left side just because of where my boost line's coming out. Um, I did it's not like too short and stuff like that, but I just want to make sure I have enough to uh, to get it on there. But, um, sorry, I just had a big bee fly by me. And uh, yeah, so I'm going to start just kind of running these wires here that they're organized and then tape them up. And then we should be able to at least get the gauge um, or the pod at least mounted. Because realistically, the only thing I have to attach now is just the boost line. Everything else is already um, good to go. And then after that, it's pretty much just running the wires through the body or um, through the dash body there. And then, uh, you know, I mean, down to where, they, where they're going to be connected, obviously, to the electrical panel and whatnot. Now you can see, there you go. There's our gauges and the pot on. And then if you look around the back, there's our wiring. And our what's it called our boost gauge um line so just make sure that you guys do that little gap in the, um, that little trim piece that's with the the leather stuff there and then i have everything running down and then i'm just going to kind of organize everything underneath but um yeah it fits really good um yeah i'm really excited about them i'll have to give everything a wipe down when i'm done but um so now what i'm going to do is just uh, put that leather trim piece on um, at least for now, like it's, if I have to take it off, it's like super easy to take off anyways. And then, uh, yeah, we'll go down at the bottom here and start wiring. Well, as far as the wiring goes here, um, so you can see when we did our taping, 
um, I mean, obviously if you're just gonna have one gauge, you're not gonna have to worry about it so much, but um, you can see here, so this is the boost gauge wiring, and then this is the oil pressure gauge wiring. Now, um, this is the harness coming in from the pressure sending uh, unit. Um, so yeah, so what we're gonna do for the boost gauge, you're gonna be going red, is gonna go up into, so here's your dimmer switch. So very easy, once you take off this panel, um, you can push the, the switch out from the back and then uh, it clips off like really easy. It's actually one of the easiest uh, uh, things to get off here. Now I just have to double check, but I'm pretty sure we're gonna be going to uh, the gray wire with the blue stripe. So um, what we're gonna do is remove some of this tape and then cut about uh, maybe like two inches down and we'll be getting ready, getting ready to splice. So what we're gonna be running to that will be in this situation is the red from the boost gauge is gonna go there and then the yellow from the oil pressure gauge is also gonna go there. So we're gonna do, uh, yeah, those two wires are gonna go there. Um, after that, um, so this black right here on the on the boost gauge is gonna go to the ground, which will be up where our um, 75X and all that stuff is. And then um, the red on the oil pressure gauge is gonna go to the red on the oil pressure gauge sending unit wiring harness, as well as the black is gonna go to the black on that one. Um, and from that point, we're gonna branch off of both of them. And one's gonna go to um, switch ignition and the other one's gonna go to ground. And then the white's just gonna go strictly right to the white one. So um, I know it's a lot to, to take in right now, so we're gonna do one step at a time here. So let's focus on doing, um, let's get the dimmer switch stuff done first. So um, yeah, again, we're taking the red from the boost gauge and we're taking the yellow from the oil pressure gauge and we're gonna be running that to our dimmer switch. So I'm just gonna quickly check to make sure that the wire I'm gonna cut is gonna be the right one. And then I'm gonna route these lines um, and try to organize them as I go to keep everything nice and clean. Hey guys, so you can see now, so there's our gray wire with the blue stripe. So um, the brown is the ground wire, the gray is straight power, and the blue with the, um, or sorry, well, the blue with the gray or the gray with the blue stripe, however you want to word it, is uh, for the dimmable option. So um, here we have our power from our boost gauge and the yellow from our um, oil pressure gauge. So you're going to want to strip them back. Um, I twist the wires all the way up and then I gave them a tape and then what I'm going to do is uh, yeah strip them further back so that you can twist uh, these all together and then uh, that way you have a nice tight connection and then also allows you to have a little more play when you put it into uh, the butt connector so I'm going to have to figure out what size butt connector I'm going to want to use I might have to use a step down one but um, yeah and then I'm also going to strip these guys right here okay guys so there's our first connection um, so yeah I try to keep hopefully the same length and now I'm gonna have to heat shrink it. Um, honestly, if you have the opportunity to get like a step down uh, butt connector, so like in this case, I'm going from a blue to a red, so it's like a 14 to 16 um, gauge down to like, um, I think it's like a 16 to 18 or something like that. But um, yeah, it would definitely help out a lot more. But that's why I'm gonna heat shrink this the best I can, then I'm gonna tape everything up after. But yeah, so there's our, our um, dimmer switch connections. And then that will allow us to, when we turn the headlights on, it will illuminate the gauges and then have, um, you know, I mean, the ability to to dim everything down just like you would on a, on stock gauges. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of shrink this up and then tape everything. Hey guys, so you can see you got the dimmer switch back in there. Um, yeah, it looks awesome now. Like I said, pretty pretty basic and easy to do. Just make sure you kind of organize everything um, underneath. So. Um, yeah, right now I'm working on doing all the grounds. What we have here, this is your, your ground wire, the black, which is going into um, just a red buck connector here with heat shrink. And then um, I don't have anything smaller than an 18 gauge. So I try to make sure I twist um, the actual uh, um, copper and the aluminum um, strands together the best I could. It's kind of hard to, to twist wires when one's tiny compared to the other one. But yeah, so what we're going to do is run this. Um, so this one's going to run up to, we're going to put in a... Um, a ring terminal here and then uh, what we might do also is um, run the actual boost gauge wire uh, ground into it as well and that way I kind of save on butt connectors and then it doesn't look as tacky too so um, and like that wire is tiny it'll, it'll fit in here no problem 
But yeah, we're gonna run that now and that's gonna go up into our 10 mil spot there, right beside the 35. So that's our ground. And then, um, yeah, I'm just trying to leave some slack because what I'm gonna do after when I'm done is just kind of tuck everything up underneath and kind of zip tie it up. And then that way in the future, if I ever do get rid of this stuff, then at least I still have the full kind of strand of everything. And then I can either like resell it or whatever, but um, just trying to think of the future stuff also as well. See, before you connect the grounds, I might as well just do the rest of the wiring here uh, for the oil pressure sensor or uh, gauge. So um, yeah, like it says in the instructions, I'm just putting the white wire from the actual uh, sending unit harness to the white wire from the gauge. So that's pretty easy. And then we're gonna do the red to the red. So those are the last two wires. And then we're gonna have to splice um, a second wire. So those two wires are gonna come together. And then we're gonna run that to um, um, the 75X, which would be our switch ignition. And then at that point, then I'll have everything and then I'll just do the grounds last. Um, or, or connect the grounds last because they're pretty much ready to go and then that way we can close the circuit and then hopefully yeah, I'm gonna put some water in this car um, Just temporary and get the rat on there just so at least I can start it make sure everything works. Okay guys So um, yeah, we're gonna give it a start now. I just put a little bit of water in the rad um, just to kind of if anything starts flowing through but um Yeah, I guess we'll see how this goes um, right now. I just have an open down plate, but that's catalyst so I don't want to do uh, do this too uh, too long here, but um, yeah, you can see the gauges. You can't really see that much right now, but um, the lights do work. Yeah, you guys won't be able to see it, but so right now, like if it's dark out, like if I cover them up, they work, and then as soon as I turn the dimmer off, um, they go back to normal there. So, uh, but yeah, so let's uh, let's see if I can start it. Honestly, the only thing I care about at the moment right now is just. Um, making sure there's no oil pissing out of the sandwich plate. So I'm gonna start it, check for leaks. Um, we'll see if the boost gauge does work. And then we know the oil pressure gauge won't work, but at least the wiring's there. So see how it goes. So there's the boost gauge fluttering around. Let's take a look. So there's the first start, uh, the temp thing there, that's probably just something, but other than that, everything seems okay. Yeah, the boost gauge has something to it, so um, yeah, awesome, man. I'm actually really excited about that. The lights you guys can't see, I wish you could, but um, so yeah, you can see, so that's with silicone brake hose, or uh, vacuum hose, sorry, and then I really wish I had the oil pressure thing set up, but um, yeah, that's okay. So yeah, guys, I think that's gonna be it for today. I'm just happy that the thing runs. I'm uh, gonna turn it off. Um, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next. I have, uh, you know, I mean, I got some parts coming in. I got a new rad coming in also. So when I get that stuff, it's gonna take a while for me to get the, um, the what's it called, the new oil pressure setting unit. So uh, yeah, guys, I appreciate it. If you have any questions as far as the gauges go, um, I'll get a nice POV video of driving at night with everything working when everything's done. But um, yeah, feel free to ask and then uh, yeah, we're off to do some more things. So thanks guys. I really appreciate um, some of the videos. I know there hasn't been a lot lately. I've just been going to town on this uh, Volkswagen here and learning. But uh, yeah, I appreciate all the support. So um, yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment if you want to. Um, any advice you'd have, anything or anything you guys want to see. And then um, yeah, check us out at Max Stack Motorsports. On Instagram so uh, I'm just really happy that this thing's actually running right now so uh, thanks guys appreciate it take care